1988. It's the biggest celebration Australia has ever seen. Australia throws a year-long party to mark the 200th anniversary of European settlement. For me, the bicentenary was a huge leap forward in the notion that the nation is not simply an outpost of Great Britain and that we do have a fabulous history. People felt good about themselves, good about the condition of the country, good about Australia's place in the world. G'day viewers. How the devil are you? Hey, Xeer. Talking at you live from my own living room. The celebrations start on January the 1st with an unprecedented four-hour TV broadcast using dazzling new satellite technology. Three satellites will bring the pictures here to this 21st century OSAT communication centre at Belrose in Sydney and then transmit them to very likely the largest Australian audience ever. The broadcast features live crosses from 70 Australian locations. Olivia, how Hi. are you? Ray Martin here, how Hi, are you? Ray, how are you? We crossed live to Russians who were in the spaceships, um, you know, hurtling around the Earth. At this moment, 360 kilometres in space and orbiting our planet is the Soviet Union's permanently manned spacecraft known as Mir. And about 35 minutes from now, they said, we'll be over Australia. We crossed live to uh, the Antarctic was stationed there. Good afternoon, Australia. Welcome to Antarctica. Have you guys all been watching tonight? Oh, we've been watching for hours, Ray. It's, it's quite an unreal experience. I think Brian Bury was on a, on a train heading across the Nullarbor. We crossed live. Strolling with my girly when the dew was pearly early in the morning. Dick Smith was on his helicopter. I'm just going to show you where the control room is. The Channel 9 guys and the Allsat guys are actually underneath the truck there. Incredible. There they go. It is great stuff. I was in New York, one of the... One of the uh, presenters actually for Channel 9. It was some ungodly hour of the morning that we were there doing our bit. Five o'clock in the morning here in uh, New York. Here's proof that we are uh, giving this program around the world because I'm in the, uh, the control room for the a and &E network which will be showing to Americans in a more civilised hour. We do all these extraordinary live things. We do have in fact this real life drama. Even Clive James who was uh, king of television at the, that time in Britain couldn't believe that we'd been so daring to do this and this was four hours of live uh, seat of the pants sort of television and it was great fun. Thousands of projects from local parks to highways have been timed for completion in 1988. The once ugly railway siding has been transformed into a stunning tourist attraction. One of the most spectacular sights is the Tall Ships project which recreates the voyage of the first fleet from England to Botany Bay. The biggest single crowd in Australian history swarmed over every conceivable vantage to relive that moment that began it all. The tall ships are the centrepiece of Australia Day celebrations on Sydney Harbour on January 26, 1988. For our commitment to Australia, the quality which best defines what it means to be an Australian in 1988. Not everyone is thrilled with the celebrations. Well, we right. While Bob Hawke is making his speech about national identity, 40,000 people, Aboriginal and non-Indigenous, hold the biggest march seen in Sydney since the Vietnam War. As the barricades were thrown aside, the procession gained momentum. Problems that were started when the first fleet sailed through those heads 200 years ago, the problems that were begun by that still exist today the beginning of a discussion of while white Australia was celebrating, black Australia was saying, well, hang on, while for you 200 years ago was a hugely significant moment, for us it was grim times. It was the beginning of a national discussion on the issue. But the celebrations march on. In April, Brisbane opens the largest event of the bicentennial, World Expo 88. I now declare World Expo 88 well and truly open. The six-month-long World's Fair includes pavilions from 36 countries and attracts 15 million visitors. This is it, the main event of our bicentenary, World Expo 88. In May, the Queen opens the most expensive bicentennial project, the $1.1 billion new Federal Parliament House. 
Although God Save the Queen is played on her rival, the Queen also has to stand through Advance Australia Fair, which had become the national anthem four years earlier. All my life at school and thereafter, we'd sung uh, God Save the Queen as a national anthem. So to be told that the national anthem had now changed, it was a bit like saying, oh, rightio, a bit like changing the name of your country. I think it did, again, very much capture the mood of the country, which was not one of distaste for Britain, but it was a sense that we were our own country. And I think it did create the conditions for that sort of surge of Republican sentiment. It's a beautiful song. We still play God Save the Queen on various occasions when uh, members of the royal family are here. So it was, in retrospect, a great event for Australia. Australia! 